so t today's homily is going to be, well, it's going to be very practical. Um, the disciples in Jerusalem send a letter to the churches that tells that they will allow Gentiles to join the church. And next is the question whether they have to become full-fledged Jews before they can be Christians. At this time, the Christians are the way. Uh, actually, I think they, they had started calling them Christians in Antioch. But they were still part of the Jewish community. There hadn't been a total schism yet. And so the apostles and the presbyters, they send a letter. And they tell the people that they do not have to follow the entire law. By the way, we are assuming that everyone is following the Ten Commandments. However, they say it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond the necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. So there are these four rules. The last rule, in Greek it is porneia, and sometimes people think of this, uh, well I guess in some cases it is translated as fornication, but it's going to become important when we look at uh, Jesus' teaching that there is no divorce and remarriage. We have in the Gospels, twice in Matthew, once in Mark, once in Luke, and then repeated in St. Paul, that there is no divorce and remarriage. Now, when uh, Jesus says this, they believe that the essence, what Jesus actually said, was there is no divorce and remarriage. If a man divorces his wife, uh, and marries another, then he commits adultery. In Matthew, there is a caveat, and they believe that this was added after the fact, except in the case of porneia. And so some people will say, oh, well, that was infidelity, uh, or it was adultery. The problem is we know what the word for adultery is. It's moikeia because it's in the same sentence. So the question is, how do we translate porneia? And we have, we put it into context here. Matthew added this, Mark did not, Luke did not. Matthew added this because he was writing to communities where there were Jews and Greeks or Gentiles. So if you were a Gentile and you had married somewhere in the family relationship, if you had married a brother or a sister or whatever, that marriage was considered porneia. And if you became Jewish or Christian, they would say, you can become one of us, but you cannot remain in that marriage because it is unlawful. So Matthew could add this to what Jesus said without changing the essence or the meaning of what Jesus said. Uh, and again, the reason I'm saying this is because in the Catholic Church, we do not allow divorce and remarriage, except in the case of porneia, except in the case of an unlawful marriage, an annulment, or a decree of nullity. And some people say, oh, well, why doesn't the church just change this teaching? How can the church be so mean? All these other churches have changed the teaching. Which, by the way, is very funny because we are attacked by fundamentalists who claim that we are not biblical, and yet they allow divorce and remarriage. Go figure. The church does not have the authority to change the clear teaching of Jesus that there is no divorce and remarriage. 
Thank God that the church has its teaching on annulments to look and to investigate where there is, whether there is anything that would keep the marriage from being a complete sacramental or a binding marriage. But again, the foundation of this is Jesus and his words, that there is no divorce and remarriage. It doesn't sound like good news, especially if you know people who are divorced, but the image of Jesus and his church in the Bible is that of a husband and a wife. And even if we are unfaithful, Jesus remains faithful. So it is a very strong testament to God's fidelity to us that there is no divorce and remarriage. God will always remain faithful to us and we struggle to remain faithful to the Lord.